Hello, Musto0063 here, ready to start a new project. And after Mega Man 8, I'm back to I Wanna Be series, and this is I Wanna Be the Galaxy. This is one of the very first fan games that I ever played, about four or five years or so ago, however long ago it was, and it's still to date one of my favourites. I think this game really does stack up against today's standards, no matter how long ago it was. It's a gimmick puzzle adventure game, which is kind of among my favourites. Um, I do love the kind of gimmick puzzle style elements to these games, provided they're not overused, you know, massively, which I certainly don't believe they are in this game. So, yeah, I'm really kind of looking forward to this. Is the game perfect? By, by certainly not, by any stretch of the imagination. The weird mix between English and Japanese I'll come to in a moment. There's some little bit of things that kind of take a bit of working out, but still don't detract too much from the game. Um, I also want to say something which I'll probably do later, um, as I try to get a little bit kind of going here. Um, say something about the window here, the, the, or the, how the recording's going. So it's a bit of a bland kind of window, and you can also see some of my desktop background. Not that you could work out what it is, or not that I'd care what you, if you would, but anyway, yeah, I'll explain all that, I think, probably during one of the mini games that I'll have to do here. Maybe via post commentary as well. It'll, it's all a bit confusing now, but. There's going to be a section here that I'm going to really need to concentrate on. I'll probably do it post-commentary and not commentate live on it because I don't want to mess up my concentration. If I spend five minutes doing it and mess up, I'll probably have to spend another five minutes getting back up to that point. It's not exactly going to be hugely fun to watch, so I maybe have a little bit of a monologue um, as I get into it uh, there and then. Um, so, uh, yeah, only other thing to say before I kind of wanted to get on was that I know someone's going to be watching this with a keen eye. I had a lot of fun watching their Let's Play <laughs> of I Want to Be the Galaxy, shuckling to myself at their various uh, failures and misgivings. Now it's your turn to have some fun watching me do it. So yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to watch out what I'm going to do. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to change the difficulty. So yeah, I'm going to be playing this on hard. I'm not going to go for the medium mode. Um, but I'd, yeah, I actually could go that as well. Show that there were three difficulty settings, so up to very hard. I'm not going to do it on very hard. I'm not that masochistic. So uh, yeah, but anyway, we're going to do it on hard, and we're going to kind of kick off. And as you can see here, we kind of open up in a galaxy area, and there's an information box up here. So yeah, while some of the game is in English, I have no idea what that says. I assume it's in Japanese. Apologies if it's another one, of, uh, another Asian language that I'm, you know, that I wouldn't be able to read that anyway. But uh, yeah, more information that I can't read as well. And we're going to kind of see that uh, as soon as we kind of start the game as well. But this is kind of our um, hub world. So um, it's kind of in space and galaxy, and we get these kind of little planets that appear. So um, here is our first planet. You get a little uh, indication there when you hover over it that there are certain things, what you need to collect in there, and also what percentage you've cleared the planet. So at the moment, obviously, it's zero. And we've got five stars there that we look like we're going to go collect. So there should be five stars indeed in the area. So kind of make my way through. I'll explain how this kind of um, option works with regard to how you enter a level later when it's actually relevant. But for the moment, let's just enter the beginning. Here is the nature planet. Here is another information box. I've got a fairly good idea what this one's saying in the sense that there are three different colours for saves. So the three difficulty settings, there wouldn't be one there. So um, for wuss saves, for instance, I think that's the bottom one. So uh, since I'm playing on hard, I won't see any saves of that colour. So um, yeah, and equally, I presume the red save uh, middle point there. If I was playing on very hard, there wouldn't be any of those. But again, I'm not that masochistic, so we should see red and yellow saves, but not the blue wuss saves. Uh, and this is also telling us that there are some different tri types of treasure chest. Some of them are mandatory in order to complete the game, in order to progress, to collect certain upgrades and items. Some of them, you know, less so, but um, to say, I will be trying to do this as much of 100% as possible. Um, on that note, I do just want to say that um, by, by when I say 100%, I don't actually mean completely 100% because of these achievements. Now there are 24 in the game, some of them I'll be getting naturally, just kind of like, you know, you cleared the nature planet, you cleared this planet, you collected all the stars, you collected all the rupees, yay, good for you. But there are still some here that I have absolutely no idea what they are. I don't believe there's any published list anywhere that tells you what they are, so since I don't know how to unlock them, I'm not going to spend an eon actually try, you know, mucking around trying to get them, because unfortunately I have no idea what triggers them. I think possibly some of the ones that I failed to get in previous kind of plays when I've done this are like really super duper ranks, like SSS ranks on the minigame planet, but if, I don't know if that's true, and even if it is, I'm not sure I have the patience to actually want to do that, so um, yeah. 
Leaving aside the achievements, as we don't go to end game, that would be terrible. <laughs> Leaving aside the achievements, yeah, I will be trying to do this 100% in terms of at least collecting all the items, stars, rupees, and completing the, uh, you know, the game as much as possible. But not the achievements, unfortunately. So we'll make our way up here to our treasure chest, we'll avoid the trigger, and we'll open our first chest. And it's a gun! I again have no idea what that says, I assume it's telling me we have a gun. Um, it's also telling me now that I presume if I press pause I can actually select this. Now there are two different toggles here, so there's an on off, and this is an auto fire one. So if I select this, and then come out, you can kind of see that if I just kind of like hold the button, then that, then that kind of works like, whoops, take the thing off. If I select the other way, and go, then I'm by holding the shoot button down, which is dead for me, I only shoot one at a time, so I have to mash the button. So sometimes you're going to want auto fire on, sometimes you're going to want it off. For the moment, I'm probably going to have it on, so uh, yeah, let's do that. I don't consider it cheating by any stretch of the imagination, like, you know, um, as some tools it would be to then when you do rapid fire or anything like that. It's clearly built into the game, so um, yeah. And there are certain times, certainly times when auto fire is going to be... I don't know mandatory, but certainly very useful. Um, also, incidentally, that uh, you'll see here that shooting saves makes no difference. Whoops, I got ahead of myself there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, touching saves is how you activate them in this game, not by shooting them. So let's move on. And you can see here, so already showed off. I can use my gun to shoot these yellow stars. Now, be very careful about this. In fact, I will do this to demonstrate. So. Um, yeah, what you do, what you want to be doing there is obviously be very careful not to shoot too much, or you end up with a projectile kind of bullet in the way that I've got no way in hell of getting past. Yay! So, um, yeah. Sorry, brief, brief minute. I'm just going to turn the sound down because it's very, very loud. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully, you can still hear the background and my and my voice and all okay and everything. But uh, yeah, voice of the sound there was a bit loud. Also, it's a bit loud when it's hitting these blocks. But um, yeah, hopefully, you can learn to live with it and it's not too bad. It won't be kind of like massively during the game. But obviously, as you can see here now, I've done this a lot better now. I wasn't just, I didn't muck up before, I just did it to kind of prove a point. But uh, yeah, obviously, don't shoot so much that, uh, in fact, you can. So again, I'll demonstrate. In fact, it doesn't seem to be working now. So I'll go back down there and do it. So yeah, you could shoot up to this point where you just uh, shoot the block. But yeah, don't shoot so much that you end up getting bullets stuck. So uh, yeah, that's that. Jump over those um, fruits, because one there will drop if you try and go under them. Or at least the leftmost one will. We'll use our gun to shoot this down. As you can see, kind of see here in the waterfall, I can't jump very high, so I have to fail terribly. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to shoot that, and then I'm going to save. And now, if I die again, I'm hoping I don't. Well, there you go. Yep, it is down. There is something about this jump that I really don't like, but um, oh well, yeah. There you go. And now, but you're lost. I guess one thing that's probably worth mentioning now as well is um, the use of the saves when you've done something is going to be quite crucial. Getting just getting stars and activating things doesn't uh, save them, for want of a better phrase. Completely, you'll have to kind of like go to a save point and actually you know, hit the save in order for things to completely register. So uh, yeah, don't get caught out by things um, and by not saving. You will have to uh, sometimes get out of a predicament or get out of a certain area in order to hit a save uh, in order to uh, actually uh, make something count. Now I did it uh, ordinarily, there'd be a wood save here, and I would have really liked it because I screwed up that really simple jump there. But uh, yeah, of course I'm playing on hard mode, I don't have that wood save there, so I'm going to have to do this all over again. Yay! So this isn't too too bad, and you can see also there at the uh, on the top left kind of area. So I'm trying to fake out this trigger. Uh, there is a star there. We're of course going to want that, so uh, that's where I'm trying to go. Went my way up there, and now we get to well, we would if they triggered when I was expecting them to. Brilliant demonstration! Yay! Maybe I'll wait a bit longer there <laughs> for the bullet bills to fire before going. Yay! And uh, you can probably guess what we're going to do there. We're going to have to make use of the bullet bills. We're going to have to not jump into that spike. Yay. Um, yeah, we're going to have to make use of the bullet bills uh, in order to um, jump across that uh, little spike area. And, uh, yeah, go over to the left and get our star. I don't know why I'm doing this without having first shot the... Uh... In fact, they're probably a good thing, since I would have been wasting my time. Also, I would have been wasting my time if I hadn't, if I hadn't managed to pull that jump off. But, uh, yeah, oh well. Two gate jumps in a row. Not the worst thing, but, um, yeah, it could be nicer. Yeah, let's... Um try and get the bullet bills to fire at this time. That's a bit better. I knew there was a trigger there! I'm pretty good on triggers on this game, in terms of knowing where they all are, knowing where they are. I won't say I know where they all are, by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm pretty good on uh, remembering most triggers. So I knew there was one there, I just couldn't remember exactly where it was. 
I wonder if I can use this block to somewhat cheat. Yeah, that's a safer thing to do. In fact, I will do that rather than make that slightly hazardous jump between the uh, two cherries. Yay. Not that I'm going to need to in future now. If I don't mess this up, we're going to do it this go. But uh, yeah, I will wait here for the bullet bills to go and not uh, screw myself over. We'll collect our star. Yay! First one of the game. So again, here, text that I have no idea what it's saying, although I can, although I have to kind of guess what it's saying. So if I click OK here, you get another text box. Now, there are two options here. You're going to be seeing my mouse cursor quite a lot of the time. If you click yes, and I will probably do demonstrate this at a later point in the game, you go back to the main hub world. This can be incredibly good if you want to get out of a tight area and get out without, because it's going to be very easy to hit a save. You simply go into a planet, there'll be a save waiting at the beginning, and you can easily save. Um, but most of the time, I don't want to actually go out of the hub world or go back to the hub world. I just want to continue on with the game, so I'm going to select no. And if I somehow manage to screw up getting this save, then uh, something's gone horribly wrong. So uh, I knew that was going to happen. I absolutely knew I was going to screw up there. But anyway, now I've got to clear this again, and including the trigger and hitting out all these blocks. Yay, wonderful. Uh, I will take them all out now until I'm going to leave that bottom one. But yeah, I have to take this out again now. But uh, oh well, yeah. But um. Yeah, kind of lost a little bit of what I was thinking about there, but oh yes, sorry. So I, so by by um, wow, the hitbox on that sucks. Um, yeah, by um, selecting no, I just continue on with where I am in the game. And provided there is an easy save point again to hit, then um, it's not such a bad option. Um, then certainly some of the time I certainly won't want to um, you know, come out of the um, come out of the area I'm already in because it's just a bit of a time waste. But uh, oh well, that is terribly timed, and I think I probably screwed this up now to the point where I ain't going to do this. How in the blue blazes am I going to do... Well, it would help if the hitboxes on the bullet bills weren't um, a little bit finicky. I will say that. That's probably one thing I would say about the game as well. The hitboxes there on those bullet bills, I think, as indeed on all bouncing things uh, in this game, are just a little bit weird. Um, I don't quite seem the fairest all the time. So, yeah, 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 that one sherry and the waterfall are, be, are proving to be my um, biggest obstacles at the moment. He's hoping that uh, I'll get a little bit better at this game as it goes on. Good, right, let's set off at the beginning here. And uh, probably a little bit too soon. Um, I will, I suppose, at least give the bullet bills that you, you need to kind of not land on the front of them, because that does always seem to not be good, but still. You know, the bullet bills, I think, could have done with you'd be able to kind of bounce on them anywhere and they actually work but um, yeah they're not too bad oh i thought it was a later spike again knew the trigger couldn't exactly remember which spike it was i thought it was a bit of a later one so i screwed up but yay anyway now at least i should have it all kind of sorted rather than i don't screw see so, so yeah it's kind of like setting off while the bullet building fire wonderful Ugh. Come on. Bullet Bill finickiness. Right, right, second spike. Let's not mess this up this time, and we can finally hopefully get off of this screen. Yay, wonderful. Right, so more information, and this one is telling us all about vines. So let me demonstrate something right now. If I jump onto a vine, oops, if I jump onto a vine, I can jump off again. If I double jump onto a vine, I can no longer jump off. So this is going to be quite crucial, and indeed on this point, this point in time to get to this vine, I had to double jump. So now if I try and make this jump, I won't be able to because I haven't got a double jump. So that's what this little area is in down here. So I can single jump onto this vine, drop off, and then jump up. So uh, yeah, kind of a, whoa, that was awful, bleh. At least I illustrated the point that I wanted to down below. I don't know why my jump is failing here, but uh, yeah, anyway. Once you kind of, there, I mean, there isn't too much um, vines uh, in the game, but uh, yeah, once you kind of, uh, oh, I know what I need to do. I just need to, yeah, drop off that and not jump onto it. Watch out for off uh, border kills, because, uh, yeah, the top of the screen would kill me. But uh, yeah, anyway, here we go again. Lots more information blah, 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 about certain areas. What this one is telling me, if I actually try and go to the right, is that I basically can't do it. So, uh, yeah, I need a certain item. You can see the little bomb icon. So, yeah, I actually need a bomb upgrade in order to go to the right. So, yeah, I can't go there for the moment. Let's go down. Um, 
in here telling us about teleporters. So since I can't read that, I'll tell you about it myself. <laughs> when you activate a teleporter, you go back to the hub world, and now I can go, in, go into the level or into the planet from that teleporter, provided I've activated it. I will save it, because if I died then and I hadn't saved it, that wouldn't have been active. But um, yeah, that's how those work. And they obviously can get you in further to, through to a level, because we're going to have to do quite a bit of backtracking in this game, going through certain levels, you know, at different times to collect certain items, particularly this level, for instance. So I just pop up back up here again, so it's on the screen to demonstrate. Yeah, at the moment I can't go to the right. But, so we're going to have to come back here, but um, yeah, it would be a hell of a chore if I had to go through the opening screens. Not a hell of a chore, maybe, they're not that long, but still. Being able to warp to this point in time, and then just go up to the area at the top there and progress, is certainly a welcome addition. Now at this point in time, I could go to the right, there is, fur there is some stuff further I could do down there. There's actually a star I could collect there, but it's a bit of a dead end at the end. And since there's another item uh, that I want to collect going that way, but I can't get yet, I figure I'll probably come back and do this later, so I don't have to clear do this whole area twice. I might as well only do it once. So um, let's hop in the teleporter. I don't think that's going to come back to haunt me. I don't think I need to collect that star this early in the game in order to trigger something. So uh, obviously if it does work out like that, then I will go back and collect it. But um, yeah, by collecting one star, I think it's one star anyway, we open up another planet. So um, yeah, that's where we're going to head off to next. This is the Ruins planet. And uh, yeah, it was a bit, of a bit of a long kind of spiel introduction to the game, so uh, yeah, I think I'll kind of uh, continue on and make some more progress. Go in here, there's a little secret, a rupee, yay, first one in the game. And we will save it, because yeah, if I died before I saved, then um, yeah, I would, I would lose that rupee. Trigger there. And this one's telling us that, um, yeah, another area, so area 13, I think the other one was area 10, I don't quite know what's up with the names, I don't know why there couldn't be 1, 2, 3, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, this is telling us that we do actually need something, um, but fortunately we will actually have an opportunity to get that item before we need to progress it's beyond the point where we couldn't. There's another little treasure chest here, but unfortunately I can't get it yet. We talk to you, I don't know what on earth you're saying, you're probably saying something on the lines of, this is the ruined planet, you're going to die, watch out for spikes and triggers and whatnot. <laughs> I have no idea what he's saying. If he's saying that, then uh, good for him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we shoot this thing and we kind of get introduced to this gimmick. So basically you shoot it and it turns these uh, blue and red blocks around. So um, when they are translucent, you can obviously get through them. But um, yeah, watch out because uh, clearly at some points in time, you're gonna want them to be solid and sometimes you're gonna want them to be translucent so you can actually get through them. And we're going to be having lots of fun with this later, uh, this during the game. And um, yeah, let's progress on. So now we get into the kind of real um, puzzle kind of gimmick areas. Not too long before we get to our item, but uh, yeah, this is kind of where the game kind of um, gets to, uh, yeah, really kind of uh, picking up and collecting a different item, uh, different icons, and actually, um, watch out for that trigger, and actually, um, yeah, getting into the game proper. So we go down here. We actually couldn't progress any further if we tried, but yeah, there is a treasure chest down here. We will open it, and we'll get our first, well, no, the gun was our first item, I guess, but this is our kind of first, a kind of unusual gimmick, per se. So, um, yeah, again, don't know really what that's, well, I can guess, again, I can guess what it's telling me. I'll go back and save, just in case I die, so that I actually have it collected. But, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, equip this item. So, you can, as you can see, you can select two. So, we've got um, a gun, usually as a main weapon, and now we can select something else as a secondary weapon. Uh, and I'm having equipped it, I'm going to also save, because if I died before I saved, then I would have to equip it again. But, yeah, by pressing a kind of second button, you can see here we've got this kind of fancy ball, which goes out in a pattern and can attack things. What it can also do, because you can see here, because I've got no way of actually progressing now, because this is a solid wall, uh, this is a solid wall, and also this is a solid wall protecting. So I can no longer shoot this icon to progress. I can now hit this icon, I can now, sorry, um, use my sphere, or whatever it is, to um, hit the object that way and progress that way. You'll also see these icons again now. So this blue one, um, which I'll kind of demonstrate again, I'll turn that off. And with the blue, when you touch it, it switches it back on. Obviously, if there are red ones, it would do the same. But obviously, what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to set this off, get away from the uh, little blue icons there, and then jump away, and the red ones will be solid, and everything's nice and hunky-dory. So, yeah, you can kind of now see how this is going to kind of work in practice. There's going to be lots of this gimmick kind of going on. It also is kind of nice, uh, like you can see here, I'm taking a bit of an odd track, because I don't necessarily want to go straight for the icon, because it would have been a bit of a tricky thing in order to time out, you know, jumping up in order to actually progress. So I want to give myself a little bit of time to steady myself, yay! <laughs> 
But for instance here again, if I went straight for this icon, like I'd maybe try and demonstrate it and then backtrack, it's a little bit of a short time, you know, just trying to get myself set in order to make the jump I want to make. So uh, yeah, I'll just kind of uh, muck around a little bit, make it take a bit of a longer track, get myself set, screw up, hit the spike, wonderful. But you get the idea. Sometimes we're going to probably want to take a bit of a different track with this um, object, just so that it doesn't go the most economical way to, um, you know, select these blocks on and off, but still. Right, let's actually get in there this time. And let's be careful here when I uh, hit the switch that I don't get trapped in a block. I need to go up here to uh, launch those spikes that you saw at the bottom right hand side of the screen in order to progress. So yeah, one thing to bear in mind, if I now stupidly shot the orb at that um, red-blue block switcher, I would die because I would be kind of stuck in the block. So uh, yeah, be careful for that. Be careful about that. And also watch out for that trigger there. <laughs> now, slight la lack of annoying lack of a save. It's me playing on on um, on hard mode, but uh, yeah. Here's where, unfortunately, a save will be really nice because it gets things get a bit hectic. Not so much here, but here. As you can see here, I can't really uh, shoot this thing and progress. So what I'm going to have to do is muck around with this uh, fruit and then try and do something a bit akin to that. But um, yeah, and mess up horribly. Yay. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit annoying to time out. And as I say, it's particularly kind of annoying. Uh, I will just kind of speed run this a bit more now and actually go for it properly and not let kind of have to wait around to set myself and screw up anyway. Yay. But uh, yeah. There are uh, there are certainly a few select opportunities. Let, let this one less so, I must admit. That last screen's not so bad. I just uh, made a mess of it, and for some reason there it didn't fire the orb. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, there are some definite places uh, or occurrences where the lack of a wood save is going to really hamper me. I'm hoping this one not so much, but um, yeah. Oh well, I can still somewhat comfortably get through. So uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, what I'm gonna, gonna what I want to do here is um, I'm also gonna have to kind of offset the thing a bit as well. So something like that, but that, so that it actually hits. There we go. And uh, again, and we're good. When we got the save point, yay! Woohoo! Um, well, let's go to 25 minutes. Hey, let's uh, let's have some fun. <laughs> so. Make sure you hit that switch as you drop down. Make sure you don't stupidly not hit the switch blare <laughs> when you walk through. And uh, yeah, make sure, I guess, here as well that you do leave yourself a bit of time. Because if you immediately just go for it, you're probably fine that you get a little bit screwed over by the uh, colour changer. One of these triggers, I can't remember. I think it's the one at the bottom, at the right hand, very right hand end. At least I hope it is. Good. And good, I made that as well. Now, there's no save here, so I don't really want to demonstrate, but there are spikes down there um, beneath that hidden face. So, uh, yeah. I suppose I could demonstrate if I don't screw this up. Why not? I'll go back and demonstrate if I don't screw this up. Another trigger here that I've got to be very, very careful about faking out. So I'm going to be very tentative here. Probably, t probably a bit too much. Apologies for that, but I'm... There we go. Just being very careful there. I also want to be very careful here. Obviously, you can see these push blocks. In fact, I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to attempt fate. Whoa, that was closer than I would have liked it to be. Well, I, well, I can, okay, I can get out now, thankfully. I couldn't get, maybe I can't get back at it. Maybe actually, can I get back to demonstrate this? Possibly not. Ah. If I can't, then um, yeah, I actually don't think I can get out to demonstrate this anymore. That's going to kill me. Well, that's a, that's annoying, but um, yeah, sorry about that. Can't demonstrate it, but uh, oh well. You know what? In fact, I think I might make it to the first boss. I don't think we've got too long left. I will. Let's press ahead and I'll make it to the first boss. Why the hell not? Um, little red icons there, which of course mean there's a red block here in my way. So um, yeah, we're going to have to do a bit of mucking around here. And um, if I hadn't already, so well, let's show this off first. Shoot this and get ready to run. And I pulled it off. So let's hope I don't mess up on the rest of it. But yeah, one thing I will say. Careful here. I do think there's probably just a few too many cliff jumps in this game. For its own good. There, there are so many opportunities where I'm going to have to use cliff jumps. And they are... I never like cliff jumps. They always make me nervous. I, I just... I don't know what it is about them. I'll come out of here and uh, save, activate the teleporter, why the hell not, save again, 
but yeah, there are an awful lot of cliff jumps in this game, and um, I don't want to say it makes it like that was awful. Um, so like really, really bad, but. Yeah, it, always, it tends to make things a little bit more awkward for me than they perhaps otherwise would be. Because, um, yeah, cliff jumps, not my favourite. <laughs> I don't know why that spike's there. There's absolutely no reason to go over there whatsoever. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Progress through there. Shoot. So you make this block uh, solid. Watch out for a trigger. Uh, don't screw this up. Right, and I will actually demonstrate something else as well here now. So you see this little icon here? You see maybe the wall is slightly miscoloured around it? So if I try and shoot this, it doesn't go through the wall. Remember that, it'll be important later. I will of course point it out when it becomes relevant later, but uh, yeah. We're also going to have to be a little bit careful at certain junctures about how we trigger that, I that icon. Because uh, yeah, on some occasions we're not going to be able to shoot the orb directly at it uh, in order to progress. Careful here. Push the block over as far as I dare. Push this block. Careful not to screw this up. And we're done. And we are pretty much at the end of the video, because that is the boss over there. You can see with the little skull uh, icon there. So yeah, it's going to be roughly about 25 minutes anyway. Here's a little treasure chest. It's an ability point. So, I might as well demonstrate that point. That point now. We have these things called, I presume they're called ability points. So uh, this icon, you see here at the moment I've only got three, I will have the opportunity to collect more in the game and that enable me to activate more, because uh, some of them cost more than two as well. This one I can comfortably afford, I could even use three. But yeah, I'm going to put this one on. And this actually allows me to um, get out of that. That actually allows me to see um, the uh, boss's uh, health. So uh, yeah, boss's HP pretty useful. I'd always like to see um, you know, a, um, a health meter on bosses to see when I'm kind of like, you know, close to beating it. It'll also have an, um, a very uh, added, uh, or an extra use uh, later on in the game. Probably I'd only save maybe for, like, really, really important for maybe the last two bosses, but um, it's still quite useful um, for the regular bosses, and uh, yeah, we'll kind of find out why next time when I take on the first boss. So yeah, yeah kind of made some uh, pretty good progress, got through the nature planet as much as I could, and we got to the boss. Uh, not that that means that's necessarily the end of this of the Ruins Planet, but yeah, reach the boss of the Ruins Planet, first video. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. And yeah, hope you've enjoyed this, and I shall be back for part two next time, when we will take on the boss of the Ruins Planet. Hope to see you then. Cheerio.